Do you think, though, that what we're learning from Donna Brazile's book suggests that the campaign, that what the Democratic National Committee did, meant this election was rigged? Yeah, I think it was. It's a pretty powerful charge. Well, what we have to focus on now as Democrats is we recognize the process was rigged. And now it is up to Democrats to build a new process, a process that really works and works for everyone. And that wasn't the only time Senator Elizabeth Warren said that yesterday. She's reacting to allegations made by former interim Democratic National Committee Chairwoman Donna Brazil that the Democratic primary was rigged in favor of Hillary Clinton. Brazil took the helm of the DNC on the eve of the party's convention last year when Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz resigned as chair after leaked emails showed party officials internally criticizing the campaign of Senator Bernie Sanders and supporting Clinton. Writing in Politico, Brazil says that after becoming interim chair, she decided discovered a fundraising deal that allowed Clinton's campaign to control the cash-strapped <coughs> DNC before she won the nomination. Brazil writes, quote, in exchange for raising money and investing in the DNC, Hillary would control the party's finances strategy and all the money raised. Her campaign had the right of refusal of who would be the party communications director and it would make final decisions on all the other staff. The DNC also was required to consult with the campaign about all other staffing, budgeting data, analytics and mailings. Brazil says she broke the news to Bernie Sanders on September 7, just two months before the general election, that he took it stoically and did not yell or express anger. Donna Brazil goes deeper in the DNC's cash problems. She writes, Obama left the party $24 million in debt, $15 million in bank debt, and more than $8 million owed to vendors after the 2012 campaign and had been paying that off very slowly. Uh, John Heilman, you've studied this campaign very closely, obviously. Um, is, let's just establish first, how different is this from something we would see in previous campaigns? In other words, the leading candidate working closely with the DNC and controlling the way it does its business. Dramatically different in the sense that in a, uh, a contested Democratic nomination fight or a Republican nomination fight, the party is supposed to be neutral uh, during the period of the time that the fighting is taking place. If you have an incumbent president, the incumbent president, Barack Obama, say in 2012, controls the DNC effectively because he is the standard bearer of the party. In a situation like this, the party is supposed to be neutral. And when you have a winner in the Democratic nomination <coughs> process, you then have that winner take control of the DNC. Traditionally, that is how it's supposed to work. We didn't have a winner yet. We did not have a winner yet. In this circumstance, it is now alleged uh, by Donna Brazil that dating back to only a couple months after Hillary Clinton announced her entry into the race uh, in the fall of 2015 that she effectively took over secretly control, financial control and other control of the DNC. And we've only started to just brush the surface here. There were allegations back at the time that if you looked at the way the DNC structured its debate uh, schedule, right. how the debates, the few, how few of them there were, when they were scheduled on weekends and so forth, that Debbie Wasserman Schultz was trying to protect Hillary Clinton from competition with Bernie Sanders. Those allegations, which I reported on the time, uh, on at the time, were completely true. Everyone understood who followed this that Debbie Wasserman Schultz was sort of on Hillary Clinton's team. The Sanders people were angry about that, but the extent of it. The financial element of it that Donna Brazil has now revealed is, I think, going to be even to people who are supporters of Secretary Clinton's uh, now, uh, is pretty shocking uh, that this degree of, of, of collusion on some level was taking place <clears throat> during the time of the Democratic nomination fight. And Donnie, it's so interesting we go back to uh, in real time. I remember Mika was uh, day in and day out going after Debbie Wasserman Schultz, saying that she was rigging the process. You know, we started talking one morning about how the process was rigged. The process is rigged. Uh, Trump picked it up and started it using the term himself later on. Um, I guess that was back when he watched the show. Of course, he never watches it anymore. Never. But, but Donnie, you look, though, what Mika was accusing uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz and the Democrats of doing, and they became so enraged. They were even calling Phil Griffin and, you know, say, you know demanding apologies. You look, though, as we get a deep dive into this, and you see that you had a Democratic Party that had everything go wrong at once. You had, Donna Brazil says, a president, an incumbent president, who raised more money than anybody else in American history, disengaged from the process, and he left the Democratic Party badly in debt. 
You have Hillary Clinton, a very ineffective presidential candidate whose team strangled the DNC and didn't let them do their job. They had control over everything the DNC was doing before she was even a candidate. And then you have the chairwoman of the DNC actively rigging the process. What, again, we've always said everything lined up, everything that had to happen for Donald Trump to win on that particular date happened. And this is a part of the million dominoes that had to fall perfectly in place for this reality TV star to get elected. Yeah, uh, certainly helps Donald Trump's continuing narrative uh, as far as crooked Hillary. It gives him a new soundbite. You know, it, it, I wonder young people growing up as they're just kind of entering watching politics and that mm -hmm. basically, is there anything that isn't rigged? Is there anything that isn't cheated on in one form or another? Uh, I find that ironic that Donna Brazil is the one coming forward. She was kind of a part of this uh, a festival of uh, uh, nonsense. And it shows how as broken as we fragment as we talk about the Republican Party right now in search of itself and it's pulling in four different directions, that the Democratic Party is even in worse shape. What does it stand for? Who are the leaders? The legacy of Hillary Clinton and the Clintons that can t and, and Barack Obama, there, is, there are no new faces, there are no new um, voices, there are no new platforms. And the Democratic Party looks look hard in the mirror and say, who is our future? And how do we leave this behind? Yeah. Because unfortunately, when you say the word Democratic Party, Hillary Clinton still comes to the forefront and that's gotta go away. Yeah, Steve Ratner, um, obviously you uh, had supported Hillary Clinton. You've supported Hillary Clinton in the past. You knew at the time that the campaign obviously had challenges uh, and said so on TV and off TV. Did you ever know that it was this dysfunctional? Well, I, I don't know if the word dysfunctional would be exactly the word. I did not know certainly about the things that Donna Brazil is alleging about how what was going on with the DNC. It, it was it was certainly clear that the that the Hillary campaign was desiring you know, wanted to win and they wanted to take control of the DNC as early as possible because frankly in a campaign that the quality of the campaign officials is generally higher than the quality of the officials no disrespect meant at the party committees themselves and so getting hold of the party apparatus can often be an important part of winning and so I understand why she tried to do it whether she did all the things Donna Brazil as Donnie said she Donna Brazil does not have the cleanest hands but she did all the things that uh, Don Brazil ledgers or not, I don't know. But I would just make uh, two points relating to what Donnie uh, said in earlier. Look, President Obama did the party no favors here. He did not really embrace the importance of building the party apparatus the way President Clinton had. And so as a result, as you saw before, the party was left essentially broke and pretty dysfunctional. And as we sit here today, looking ahead, which is probably as important as looking back, we're in essentially the same place. The DNC is not uh, very present in the lives of activist Democrats like my Myself. They're not raising money very successfully. Tom Perez, who's running it, is a very nice and capable guy, but they, but the RNC is way out raising them. And I, and we, and as you've pointed out many times, we lost the 900 state legislature seats, we lost the governorships, we lost the Senate, the Senate positions, and somebody's got to pull the DNC and the party apparatus together. And right now, we don't have a leader, as uh, as Donnie said. We'll have Donna Brazil on Morning Joe next week. We're going to fit in a quick break here when we come back. Donald Trump has reacted to this Donna Brazil story and also some reaction from the Bernie Sanders campaign when Morning Joe comes right back. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.